Well, hey everyone, my name is Nathan Jones, and if you're new here, welcome. I like to talk about all things movies, specifically Blu-rays, and today we are counting back on the films that I have picked up for the month of October. I actually picked up quite a few, um, not terribly too many like in the past, because I've just been kind of cutting back a little bit, but I wanted to make this video because one, I just wanted to update you in my collection. I've seen a lot of these video uh, movies, but I have not seen a lot of them as well. But I, I'm really looking forward to it. October was just so stacked with horror films and talking about horror just in general. So I really didn't have time to make this video, but now I do. And uh, I just want to showcase some of the pickups that I picked up uh, for the month. And I also picked up a few things uh, early on in November because there were some really good 4K deals. And so now I want to showcase those to you. And I hope you enjoy my pickups. And uh, I'm curious to know what did you pick up in the month, month of October and also in the month of uh, November and what you plan on picking up as well because Black Friday is coming right around the corner. So let's just jump right into the films that I picked up. <sighs> Whatever. I picked up Clueless. Clueless is a film that I actually watched for the first time earlier on in uh, last year, uh, last summer actually for the first time. This film from 1995, Alicia Silverstone, Paul Rudd, Wow, uh, how in the world have I not seen this until then? Um, I, I watched it at Alamo Draft House, and I there was like a movie party, and it was really really fun. Uh, I had all these different gadgets, and there was like a whatever card, and it was just really really fun. And it's a really fantastic, light heart, uh, kind of uh, you know coming of age film that <laughs> is quite enjoyable, and I cannot wait to rewatch it. And, and when I saw it at Best Buy. I was like, well, I have to get this because it's one, it's a steel book. I'm not super into steel books, but I mean, for, for what they are, you know, there are some really, really cool steel books. Alex Ross, Universal Horror Monsters are probably my favorites. But I really, um, I really enjoy this film and I can't wait to rewatch it again. And um, I just love Paul Rudd so much because, uh, you know, it's Paul Rudd. Come on. All right, so the next pickup that I got was actually a recommendation from two of my friends, uh, Movie Chatter Steph and then also Cinema Dave. Uh, they talked about this film and they talked about how much they enjoy it. In fact, I think Dave, this is one of his uh, favorite directors. Um, I want to get it correct. I want to say her name's Kelly Reichardt. Yeah, Kelly Reichardt, which I actually had seen one of her recent uh, additions into the Criterion Collection, which is literally escaping my mind. So anyone in the comment section, please put that down in the comment section. I, I watched that film. Um, beautiful cover, by the way. Uh, but Kelly Reichardt uh, is somebody that I'm I'm very you know uh, new to, and so I have not seen this film yet. And it's from A24, and it's a film that I this is probably the film that I wanted to watch the most before all the cinemas shut down unfortunately. And that was First Cow. And so uh, I've heard really, really great things about this, like I said earlier, from my good friends. And so I'm really looking forward to diving into this one when the time is right. But yeah, I really wish I did watch this in theaters. And honestly, I wish theaters were kind of back to normal. But you know, everything in the situation in the world is a little crazy right now. But yeah, check out First Cow if you haven't. Uh, I got this, uh, the Blu-ray with the DVD and digital. And so I'm excited to check this one out. First Cow um, comes with a first recommendation prime meat. I don't know, that's really lame. All right, so next is a film that I was actually recommended again, once again, from Cinema Dave and also Vanessa. They both recommended this film to me because they are big fans of Joy Division and that also they think this is probably one of the best musical bio, like biopics that, that exists. And so that's pretty high praise. And I'm talking about Control. Uh, and Control right here uh, is starring Sam Riley right here. Uh, and uh, I, as Ian Curtis, and I'm really looking forward to this uh, journey and figuring out more about Joy Division. I, I've always seen uh, that first Joy Division record, or I want to say it's the first one, but I, I've recently dived into Joy Division. I've been listening to New Order, The Cure, growing up a little bit, but also recently I've been kind of going back towards that, that era, and so I'm excited to check this one out as well. Uh, what do you think about Control? Have you, any of you seen it? I want to know down in the comment section down below. Our right, next is a film that I actually ordered from this place, which is crazy because it still exists. There's still one. I'm talking about Blockbuster, the last Blockbuster. So I got the documentary, the last Blockbuster from Blockbuster, and uh, it's just a documentary about uh, the survival of this this one store. And yeah, I now down from 9,000 locations down to one, which is just absolutely insane. Uh, I cannot believe that this is still around. It's in Oregon right now, uh, and so yeah, there's a lot of different people involved in this film. Uh, from Doug Benson, uh, Adam Brody, Kevin Smith, Jamie Kennedy, 
Brian, uh, I can never say his name, Brian Poison, uh, the comedian slash metal guy, uh, Sam Levine, uh, you know, Ion Sky, a lot of different people um, who are, are in the filmmaking community, also in the collecting community. So I'm excited to check this one out. Uh, and if you've seen the last blockbuster, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on it. And yeah, so that's the last of my normal Blu-rays that I picked up. Now I'm going to talk about some 4K titles that I picked up. All right, so along with Clueless, uh, I also picked up this 4K title, and I'm, I'm excited to talk about it because this was actually one of my favorite films earlier on this year when I did watch it in theaters. I'm talking about The Invisible Man. And uh, wow, with Elizabeth Moss, this is just an incredible reimagining of this tale. Um, obviously, it's not the same at all like the Claude Rains Universal Horror Monster film, The Invisible Man, and it's, it's really distant from it, but it's such... A creative reimagining of this film, and it's it's preying on a lot of the like the um, the unfortunately uh, social things that happen to a, a lot of women, uh, and uh, yeah, it's just it's a really hard movie to watch, but it's also um, one of those movies that is definitely like a must watch. It's definitely one of the best films that came out this year. And unfortunately, this year is marked with some terrible things. But, you know, Invisible Man is definitely not one of those things. And so you should certainly certainly check this one out. This steelbook is really cool. Um, just in the back, uh, just seeing that. And then I got, uh, this, you know, the Blu-ray DVD, Blu-ray Blu 4K, and then also the uh, digital download in here, too. But, yeah, check out The Invisible Man if you have not seen it. That I just realized what I said. So uh, moving on from here uh, are some titles that I actually picked up recently. So in the last week in November, I picked up both of these because they were on sale. They're 4Ks. It's almost Christmas. I have to get them. And the first one I picked up was for only $9.99. I got the 4K for It's a Wonderful Life. Donna Reed, Jimmy Stewart. It's one of the most ultimate Christmas movies of all time. Obviously, um, there's not much more I can add to the conversation because a lot of people already know about this film, but it's a great one. Um, it's one of the best, and uh, it's going to probably look wonderful on my 4K TV. And so I'm really, really excited about this one, and it's on sale for a really good price. And so this has the colorized version and the normal black and white version. Watch the black and white version. It's, it's better. Um, but anyway, uh, Invisible... Uh, <laughs> I almost said The Invisible Man because I just talked about it. It's a wonderful life. It's a, it's, it is a wonderful time, and it's a wonderful life. Uh, moving on from here to another Christmas film, one that has uh, a lot of people talking, in fact, um, just in general, because of what's going on with the rights of these uh, productions from Charles Schultz and Peanuts. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about Charlie Brown Christmas right here, a Charlie Brown Christmas on 4K. I picked this up. I, I want to say it was around 12 it was like nine to fourteen ninety nine. Regardless, I needed to own it because I, I need. I know that these are kind of running out of stock because Apple had bought the rights to Charlie Brown, and uh, so it's taken off cable for sure. And so uh, I'm just excited to own it. And I, I don't know why I haven't owned Charlie Brown at all, like, but until this point, but I do now, and I have the 4K of Charlie Brown Christmas, so I'm really excited about that. In fact, uh, Charles Schultz was the second cousin on my dad's side, obviously long dead, uh, but it's really interesting to know that because uh, we actually have a tradition in my house uh, to wear Charlie Brown Christmas related things um, every year, at least for the last few years we've been doing that. So um, yeah, it's it's about time that I have this film. So uh, yeah, Charlie Brown Christmas, go check it out if you can, go pick it up as quickly as possible before Apple takes it away. So moving on uh, to the Shocktober from Arrow. I actually picked up a few titles from Arrow Video uh, in the US, and so I, I really wanted to showcase these films that I picked up. I have not seen any of them, uh, but these are films that have been on my radar for some time. One of them is kind of new for me, but and and I'll talk about that one first, but it looked really, really interesting, and I, I've heard some hype from it. So I'm excited to talk about the first one that I picked up from Arrow Video is American Horror Project Volume 1 right here. And this is on sale for a, a really good price. So right here, you have that cover. I actually switched the covers to the original poster art. Um, the other cover on the other side of this is like the same as that. But, but we have uh, Carnival of Blood, The Witch, uh, Who Came from the Sea, and The Premonition. And so these are all films that I'm, I'm excited about. Yeah, these are all films from the 1970s, so I'm excited about that. I like 1970s horror, and I'm sure these are some underseen gems, and so I'm glad that Arrow Video put this out, and so I'm excited to check out that. Next is a film that I picked up from a really, really famous director, 
uh, in horror especially, and that's George A. Romero. You know, he's known specifically for Night of the Living Dead and a lot of other titles, especially with zombies. And But I actually picked up a, a film, Season of the Witch, right here, and this is the original uh, cover for the poster. But I also have the other poster on this side. It's like a witch with a uh, raincoat on. I, I'm excited to see this one. It's from 1972, and it's a film that has a lot of special contents, but uh, yeah. I've heard some good things about this one, and I definitely wanted to check this one out. So, all right, and then the last film that I picked up is a, a film that is legendary in the sense of the Jalo films, uh, and it's one, from one of the originators of Jalo. And I'm talking about Mario Bava, and I'm talking about Blood and Black Lace. And this is definitely one of the original Jalo films, and I actually have not dived there terribly too deep into Jalo. I've seen a lot of Argento films, at least a lot of the bigger named ones. I've seen some Fulci. Uh, but I, I'm excited about Mario Bava, and I've actually watched some Mario Bava films. In fact, I loved Black Sabbath. It's one of my favorite anthology horror films, and I actually have Kill Baby Kill over to the side. Still haven't seen that one, but uh, I have enjoyed like Black uh, Sunday and a lot of these crazy, crazy films uh, from this Italian uh, director. But I, I'm excited about this one, um, and I've heard really fantastic things about this because it's definitely one of them, uh, the like the uh, probably one of like the, the grails of the Jalo films. So anyway, uh, that's what I got from the uh, Shocktober sale. Did you pick up anything? I I'm kind of curious down in the comment section down below if you want to tell me what you picked up for the Shocktober sale from Arrow. All right, so moving on from here, there's actually a Kino sale, and I actually only picked up one thing from it because I wanted to try to save money a little bit, and I, I was actually really excited to pick this one up, and I didn't even know it existed, which is really crazy. What am I talking about? The thing that I'm talking about is the Pioneers of African American Cinema right here. So actually, to the corner of me, I have the Pioneers First Women Filmmakers, and I've been wanting to dive deep into that one. I'll probably do it early on next year. And uh, this is just another um, under seen, under, you know, uh, appreciated set of films and filmmakers and people who uh, were in the early days of American cinema and especially when it comes to the black community. And so this is an amazing box set. I cannot wait to check this out. Curated by Charles Musser uh, and Jacqueline Najuma Stewart. Um, and it just, it talks about films from the 1920s uh, to the 1940s, and it has a lot of films in here. Uh, 19 digitally restored feature films, short films, fragments, and documentaries, 80 page booklet with essays and photos, interviews with historians and archivists, musical scores, uh, and you know bonus content not available on DVD. So let's just like open this up. So right here We have the film notes um, from the african-american uh, pioneers set um, And it's just it's gonna have so much uh, context here and, and rundowns of all the films in this collection and I, I'm really excited to see the commentary on all this and kind of see um, how a lot of these uh, films were seen and uh, who were the audiences for these types of films, and I'm just, I'm, we're so, I'm so glad that we live in this time, uh, in this era uh, of video, and also just in, in the general fact that we are able to explore things that the people who created this probably wouldn't have never thought that people like us um, would watch them, you know, this far into the future. Because a lot of these are almost 100 years old. If you're going all the way back to 1920, right, uh, 80 to 100, 100 years old is quite a long time, and uh, well long time in the in the scope of history of cinema, right? And so it's really interesting that we were able to do that. So I'm excited to check this one out. Um, there are some more artwork right there. There's the five discs right there. Lots of content are gonna be into this one and I'm very, very excited about this one. And uh, once again, this is probably something I might actually explore in February when it is Black History Month. Um, I think that might be a good exploration of my time for that, for that month, um, but yeah. I'm very excited about this set. Do any of you know about this set or the uh, Pioneers First Women's Filmmakers set? I, I'm kind of curious down in, down in the comment section down below. What else did you pick up from the Kino sale? Let me know in the comment section down below. All right, the last thing that I wanted to showcase is a film that, well, it's not film, it's actually a lot of films. <laughs> it is uh, earlier on before uh, the, the Scream Factory sale that happened that nobody's really gotten their content yet because they haven't shipped out yet and that's perfectly fine you know uh covid is a bastard but there is something that ha there was a shout select sale and i also only picked up one thing from it and actually uh, i've seen a few of these films I, uh, i've seen the horror ones but they are horror comedies for sure because this is a duo 
Abbott and Costello. So I actually got the complete Universal Pictures collection right here from, from Shout Factory. This is spy number 92. This is a great box. I love it. First of all, I, I love the presentation on it. Um, 28 films together right here. Uh, there's the three discs or the three, uh, you know, Blu-ray uh, sets, right? With five discs set in each. And so, yeah, it has uh, this little booklet as well talking about each film you know and uh the, the careers of Abbott and Costello and yeah like I said I've only really seen like you uh, the universal horror monster films with Abbott and Costello so the mummy invisible man Frankenstein like the best one right but I'm really curious to watch all the other films in this in this particular set because I'm just I, I'm really excited about it and I definitely need a good laugh um, and I'm definitely going to be doing that so what about you did you pick up anything during that shout select sale um, and also has any of you seen uh, any of the Abacus Cello films do any of you have this set I, I'm actually kind of curious down in the description down below but yes thank you so much for watching this video I know it was a long time coming because it's October stuff that I picked up but I, I'm definitely um, wanting to showcase a lot of these films to you and I, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are and what you picked up so let me know down in the comment section down below what you thought. Um, tell me what you are going to plan on picking up in the coming months as well. Hit a like and share this video. Hit that notification bell and I'll see you next time. I'm not jonesing around.